welcome back. We are in Miami. It's a beautiful day. Billy is serving a Marquis 55 today on Key Biscayne, a very hoity-toity area. But uh, I decided not to join him today. There were too many people on the survey and that tends to be a little chaotic. And uh, it's really hard for me to film and get adequate uh, information just because there's just so much going on and people are ask usually asking a lot of questions. Billy has two surveys that we have to perform. One is the uh, Marquee 55 here on Key Biscayne, Miami. And then the second one is going to be in Palm, Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, which is another Marquee. Uh, but it's a bigger one. I think it's a 70 in the 70 foot range. It is all about Gidget today. Gidget, you want to go to the dog park? Billy finished his survey in Biscayne Bay on the Marquis 55 and now we're heading into West Palm Beach for the Marquis 70. So I'm keeping my eye out for a couple different buildings here too. The Porsche building and the Fontainebleau, which was very famous from the James Bond movie. It's so windy! They get a lot more wind on this side than we do. On the, uh, on the Gulf side. And unfortunately, there isn't like too many views of the ocean because they block it all with these condos. to pick up Billy uh, he's doing that uh, marquee 72 everything that went wrong today went wrong um, so they've had a long hard day Billy's gonna have to actually go into tomorrow to finish this um, a lot of things were failing broke down uh, he couldn't test so um, I'll get more of the story here in a minute but I brought him and Ryan the broker some gifts so I think they'll appreciate this
Wow, there's the impeller. Gnarly. Hi, this is Billy Fox. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm adding a, a segment here on a survey we did in Palm Beach this last week. We just got back and I thought I'd show you kind of what I look for, uh, how I go through it, and how I end up writing my report. I just sent out today to the client. I took probably 200 pictures at least on this. The survey turned out to be an extra day for the survey. And by what I mean by that is we, see tri we tried to see trial the first day after the haul out and the boat uh, burned up some impellers. The impellers were probably original, uh, but nonetheless we, that caused us to go into the second day of the survey where we had to do a proper sea trial. This boat that we looked at was a 72-foot boat built in Wisconsin, and it, is, it was a 2015, 2016 model. So kind of like a car, they can switch over. Boat is going to be transshipped through the Panama Canal on a cargo ship to Ensenada, and so we take into account even from being from the West Coast. Normally, I know that you need more anchor chain out on the southern on the West Coast than you do here in Florida. So, the small things like that we look for. Also, uh, we do the acid test on the engines. This boat we had a, me a mechanical survey as well to take oil samples. Uh, it turned out we found a few things uh, and the reason we had to go to the second day is because the main engine on the starboard side overheated even going slow in, in idle and we had a lot of rudder slop so we had a little bit of vibration. For instance, the, in, uh, the exhaust on this boat is underwater and we're looking up through the bottom, we're hauled out now. So the exhaust comes wet through these two manifold dumps into a section where it goes out underneath the hull. But in order to relieve back pressure on the engine, you have to have a bypass. And this is the bypass, and that's plumbed to the back of the boat. But you can see in our other picture here, the bypass looks like a little happy face. So this bypass looks like a little happy face and you can see this this is a crush shield that was supposed to be placed up against the fiberglass so when you tighten the hose clamps on the expansion joint the blue silicon high temperature uh, expansion joint it doesn't crush the fiberglass it, it slipped it fell and it's covering the bypass so the exhaust was coming out the hull so all these all these issues were coming up and we overheated the generator once we overheated the generator, I want to show you another picture. We realized that what had happened is the DC voltage also quit. As soon as the generator went offline, we lost all AC power and DC power. Only the engines were running. By this time, we were past the bridge. Starboard engine overheated. We shut it down. We were on port engine only, and we had bow and stern thrusters. On this, oh, probably on separate batteries because what happened is the Royce batteries I want to show you. Royce batteries are single cell two volt system that are and their batteries are made to last 10 years or longer. Somebody watch this picture right here. These are the batteries. I'll blow this up for you. If you can see that cell there is no water in that cell. These are wet lead acid batteries. They fried the batteries, so as soon as we lost AC power, we lost the battery charger. 28 volts for a normal system, for a 24 volt system. We went down to 2.7 volts. These things are dead as a doornail. What was happening is the AC loads from the generator and the shore power were what they call surface charging right over the plates, going right directly to the panel. As soon as you lost the AC, you lost your batteries. This, sure. is, this is a fire waiting to happen, by the way. This is something you don't mess around with. If your batteries are this dry, where the plates are showing with no water on them, if you put water in them and charge them, it creates like a hydrogen bomb. And if you've ever seen a battery explode, it is not pretty and you don't want to be anywhere close. I'll show you another picture. One, two, three, four, five, six to make a 12 volt battery. There's a whole nother one over here that's 12 batteries 
those batteries are $400 a piece. 12 times 400, you do the math. That plus the, you know, we found probably $40,000 worth of necessary fixes to make this boat safe and insurable. I'll show you the report real quick. We turn out for the owner or for the buyer, maybe an owner. We do insurance jobs as well. We don't want to show you that, so I'm going to go right directly to the value of the boat. We're looking at a boat that they've agreed on a $1.95 million purchase price, not including my survey on them. So they'll go back and negotiate. Typically, you get about a third of what you're going to negotiate for. This boat had a lot of things that, once the owner fixes, is going to benefit him. But things like the exhaust, things like the vibration because the rudders are loose, uh, the props, that's another picture I didn't even show you. The props, we track the props, and when you're tracking the props, one of the blades turned out to be a quarter inch out. That can cause a lot of vibration. Props alone on this boat probably cost $7,000 each. They're five blade, full disc area, kind of skewed. They're cupped, and the cups too, where the blade ends, the tip, they're thin. That is tiny air bubbles imploding on it, and it thins out the tips. So if you talk about just props, exhaust, uh, tightening up the shaft glands and the batteries, right there you're talking probably about $30,000. Then all the engines need a full service, probably thirty dollars to ship it back to San Diego. But it's a good boat. It will be the first 720 marquee back in Southern California. Really? Uh, this boat goes, by the way, it goes when I say 28 knots, that's top speed, but that's 35 miles an hour. So it cruises comfortably at 25 miles an hour, say, easily. You are burning 100 gallons an hour. <laughs> it's a 27-page report about the boat. These recommendations, I have 14, and those are what the insurance company is going to want to see fixed. There's suggestions. These are things you don't have to do necessarily, but it would be nice. I have 20. Uh, those are things that are not going to sink the boat, but, you know, for instance, uh, they, they, the boat has underwater lights, which they don't work. We couldn't get them to work. Uh, it has a swim platform that retracts down into the water to launch a dinghy and then comes back up. It was intermittent. This took me about four days to complete, and uh, it was successful. The boat's a good boat, and we'll come back and tell you more. If you have any questions, you can always call me. I, I will talk to you for uh, no cost for the first 15 minutes. Call me. Uh, my number can be found on the NAMS, National Association of Marine Surveyors website, and it is uh, available to you to find out who I am. And if you want to call me and ask me any questions, I have uh, the first 15 minutes, I will consult with you for free. After that, uh, we go into a different mode, but go look for your next boat. Have fun. Uh, it's it's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding, and you're, you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of memories out of your boat. And your family's probably going to love it. If you don't have family, you got got to have friends because once you have a boat and you have booze on it, you have friends. Okay. <laughs> and fish. <laughs> oh, fish. And fish. Invite a fishing buddy. Yeah, some people go. like to eat fish. Some people like to catch fish.